Hello everybody, Nelson Virgil here, co-founder of Clinic Optimizers, a company that provides educational programs and support to clinicians in the hormone replacement field. Today I'll be speaking of essentials of human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, therapy in men. I'm also the founder of ExcelMail.com and DiscountedLabs.com. ExcelMail.com is an online men's health forum in which you can get your answers um, to most of your questions related to testosterone replacement, erectile dysfunction, uh, increasing muscle mass, decreasing fat mass, exercise, nutritional supplements, etc. Discounterlabs.com is a company that provides affordable blood tests to most people in the United States without the need to go to a doctor, uh, a doctor's office. So check out, check out both uh, websites and um, uh, get some benefits out of this information. Thank you. So this information is not a recommendation, nor it is intended to provide direction regarding diagnosis, treatments, or potential outcomes. Any interpretation of this information should be used by the prescriber at his or her discretion. And the agenda is uh, I'll be reviewing um, current uh, practices and data on the use of HCG in men with or without testosterone replacement. Beyond fertility, are there any non-fertility or testosterone supplementation therapy related benefits of HCG? We'll be reviewing data that is emerging as we speak. And uh, lastly, opportunities for further research. I'll be suggesting uh, studies that hopefully uh, clinicians can um, do to um, develop more uh, knowledge in this area. So human chorionic gonadotropin is a hormone naturally produced in the human placenta to maintain progesterone production during the first trimester of uh, pregnancy. And progesterone enriches the uterus with a thick lining of blood vessels and capillaries so that it can sustain the growing fetus. It's a glycoprotein composed of 237 amino acids. There, uh, it's got two uh, units, one alpha and one beta. The alpha subunit is identical to that of uh, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and thyroid stimulating hormone. The beta subunit is unique to um, HCG, and that's the one that gets uh, tested uh, for pregnancy in, in women. Use of HCG as testosterone therapy adjunct uh, combination. Uh, some physicians are using HCG in combination with either testosterone creams or gels, uh, testosterone injections, or uh, even pellets. Continuous exposure to exogenous testosterone, the word exogenous means uh, testosterone that you provide to your body, uh, may reduce fertility in vast majority of users. Uh, testosterone supplementation therapy may also cause testicular atrophy in 10 to 30 percent of users. A smaller testicular size, a baseline, may make atrophy more obvious to patients. Possibly, uh, possible effects of DSD on fertility and testicular size need to be explained to patients before they get on testosterone supplementation. If these potential side effects are important to the patient, discuss possible use of HCG with testosterone with emphasis on adherence to two to three times per week injection compliance. Very important to discuss this with the patient since it requires uh, a lot more discipline to uh, comply with HCG um, therapy. In men, uh, HCG mimics luteinizing hormone produced in the pituitary gland to stimulate testicular Leydig cells to produce testosterone. However, it shuts down endogenous testosterone, uh, LH, meaning the body's own production of LH just like testosterone therapy. So in blood testing, once you provide HCG to a person, to a man, uh, LH testing, LH blood test will appear as zero. When used in combination with testosterone supplementation therapy, it can potentiate increases in estradiol, hematocrit, edema, and or acne. So uh, these variables need to be closely monitored. Normal lipholyzed uh, vials containing 3,000, 5,000, 11,000, and 50,000 units of HCG are made by compounding pharmacies. Uh, pharmaceutical brands are also available at three times the cost. Latest data show that some men with uh, testosterone supplementation therapy plus HCG were able to remain uh, fertile. And anecdotal effects on raising sex, uh, sex drive in men, it's also emerging. 
This is a bio, uh, an example of a bio of 11,000 units of HCG, comes in a powder, and it is also shipped with a bottle of bacteriostatic water, which you have to mix into the powder before injection. It needs, it requires refrigeration, so that's also another factor to consider when using HCG. HCG used in males, it may be used in patients for six to eight weeks who have abused anabolic steroids to reset the natural production of testosterone or men on anabolic cycles. Um, I'm, I may not have time to uh, cover this uh, topic uh, today. It may be used in younger males as a sole method of testosterone treatment with secondary hypogonadism. Uh, this is a use uh, of monotherapy without the use of a combination therapy with testosterone. All men respond differently to HCG and the ability to boost testosterone production by testes. We'll see some data that indicates that uh, older men and men with um, long exposures to either testosterone or anabolic steroids in the past may not, uh, may not benefit from HCG as well as younger men um, with uh, no um, prior exposure to androgens. HCG may not work well with uh, men who have primary hypogonadism, uh, i.e. dysfunction of the latex cells in the testes. Although I have talked to a few clinicians that say uh, it may work actually in some men that may have some impaired latex cell function, but yet um, they still have some function to, um, to respond. It may be able to, it may have additional benefits beyond testicular atrophy, reversal, and prevention of fertility. And I'll be providing details on that uh, later on. So what are the typical clinical doses used um, out there in the, in the field? And HCG has become very popular. In many of uh, clinics in the United States, it's not popular at all uh, overseas, uh, in Canada or, or Europe or Australia. Uh, men are still struggling trying to have access to HCG uh, since many doctors do not have uh, training on, on the subject. Uh, this is an off-label use that, um, and uh, a product that is generic. So educational efforts out there are pretty much lacking. For boosting testosterone and maintaining sperm production in men with low testosterone as monotherapy, uh, physicians are prescribing anywhere from 1,000 to 2,500 international units three times per week. To maintain fertility in men on testosterone, uh, 500 I use every other day. I'll be showing some data on that protocol. To prevent or, and or reverse uh, testicular atrophy and boost libido, uh, which is an anecdotal benefit, in men on testosterone, 250 to 500 I use twice per week. This is a non-validated dose that uh, are, is uh, yet to be um, proven by by uh, research. Timing of HCG dosing men on testosterone varies among clinics. There is some anecdotal effic efficacy of combining HCG plus testosterone in the same syringe. That's actually a protocol that I, ha I have developed myself and uh, you can Google uh, Nielsen virtual HCG video to show uh, that protocol. Monitoring increases in hematocrit, estradiol, and DHT may be needed. As I said before, HCG adds on to those variables uh, when used with testosterone. So what are the actual uses um, that are approved or off-label uh, right now in the field? First of all, and the one that is actually FDA approved, uh, is the treatment of undescended testicles in uh, teenage uh, boys. Uh, low testosterone, hypogonadism is the second one, infertility, um, testosterone therapy adjunct, like I said before, in combination of testosterone uh, therapy, it's actually an off-label use, um, anabolic steroid adjunct for the same purposes of allowing or preventing the loss of fertility uh, while using anabolic steroids, which is obviously they're illegal in the United States unless used for clinical purposes. Uh, what they call anabolic steroid post psychotherapy in men that um, had low tes uh, normal testosterone to start with and uh, eventually they do anabolic steroids for a few months and then they get off and, and uh, attempt to accelerate the recovery of their natural production of testosterone. As I said before, this is an off-label use. Uh, it is a harm reduction um, use uh, that um, many physicians are not prescribing, obviously, but um, 
patients are accessing uh, through the internet. So I think it's my responsibility eventually to speak about this subject since um, it is part of a harm reduction program. Possible improvement of libido uh, beyond the effects of testosterone alone um, are, are common. Up, um, I'm one of them. I, I would say I have a very strong biases for the use of HCG in combination of testosterone because of the added benefits when it comes to libido and even mood. So are there any other benefits to uh, reactivating upstream hormones? I'll be speaking about what happens when uh, you provide testosterone replacement um, or supplementation to a person, to a man, uh, what happens upstream in, in the cascade of hormones. So we, we say that it, uh, HCG is a mimicker of LH. It's not the same molecule, but it behaves like uh, luteinizing hormone, which is a hormone in the, coming from the pituitary gland towards the testicle, uh, testicular de latex cells that uh, make and produce testosterone. When you provide testosterone replacement to, to a man, um, there is a shutdown of the LH from the pituitary gland. And providing HCG may actually um, replace um, the effects of LH on the body. So as an adult onset hypogonadism is due to the disruption of central endocrine axis, it has been shown that HCG acts similarly to LH in this pathway. However, HCG shuts down LH in blood testing. Uh, as I said before, LH is, is basically zero. So some clinicians get confused with this fact. And LH and HCG actually bind to the same common receptor uh, term, uh, luthonizing hormone chronic uh, gorinotropin re uh, receptor, LHCAGR, which is expressed in numerous tissues, including adrenal glands, brain, skin, retina, <clears throat> as well as reproductive organs. So it, this tends to uh, suggest that there may be an effect of LH and or HCG beyond just testicular uh, function. The non-gonadal expression, meaning the expression outside the testicles of LHCGR, has been shown to be necessary for local steroid production. Diabetes, thyroid diseases, renal dysfunctions, advanced age, inflammatory conditions, stress, etc. support the release of soluble LHCGR from the inflamed tissues into circulation. So nobody really knows yet what this means, but what it means is that the receptor itself may have other functions beyond the production of testosterone in the testes. As I said before, LH and uh, ACG attach to the same receptor. There's an alpha unit and beta unit of HCG. Um, both act, as I said before, to, on the same receptor. However, um, they work differently intracellularly. This is the only study that has, uh, I have been able to find in the, in the literature on the effect of testosterone and or anabolic steroids on upstream hormones like pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. It was actually published a long time ago, 1985, and uh, I would actually love to see this data replicated in 2018, uh, 19, since it's, uh, in my point of view, very important. It actually showed that uh, testosterone doses of 200 milligrams a week, <clears throat> there was a substantial decrease in pregnenolone, DHA, and progesterone in, in this man that uh, stopped uh, therapy after 26 weeks. And obviously, you see a recovery, slow recovery of all hormones after that uh, period of time. So, testosterone supplementation therapy and upstream hormones, what, what are the issues here? When we provide testosterone supplementation, this uh, decreases or shuts down several hormones. Uh, luthonizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are shut down. Pregnenolone uh, and upstream hormones uh, decreases, progesterone decreases. The testosterone inside the, cell, uh, the testicles, in, uh, we call that intratesticular testosterone decreases. I'll be speaking about uh, how important this, this fact is. Um, blood levels of testosterone do not equate to testicular uh, T 
in men on testosterone. And the intratesticular testosterone is very important in, in relation to the production of uh, sperm. DHEA uh, can decrease uh, at um, higher doses and sex hormone binding globulin always decreases when providing uh, testosterone supplementation. The asterisk shows that these hormones may actually uh, be um, uh, increased by the use of HCG, which is a hypothesis that needs to be proven with more data. I apologize for the really uh, busy um, diagram. Let's see shows what happens from the point of cholesterol molecule downstream in the production of sex hormones, cortisol, aldosterone, and um, estradiol testosterone, the hydrotestosterone at the bottom. So cholesterol basically uh, is converted into pregnenolone, which is the, it's called the mother of all hormones. Pregnenolone goes into two different paths, uh, one uh, to uh, produce progesterone and cortisol, and another one, uh, like I showed here, aldosterone, which is a, a, a hormone that um, regulates um, electrolytes and, and um, in the body. So where you see the yellow stars uh, up here in the beginning of the chart, not the flow chart, uh, that's where luthadizing hormone um, is, is needed for activation of that uh, path. When we use testosterone supplementation therapy, LH is, is shut down. So uh, this may explain why the previous study that I just showed, the 1985 study, showed decreases in pregnenolone and progesterone uh, once um, men use testosterone and or anabolic steroids. So the hypothesis is, is, is HCG able to reactivate this, this path, this hormone path? The, another fact that we need to discuss is that long-term suppression of LH uh, caused by testosterone supplementation may or may not be healthy. Nobody has really looked at, 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 at this fact. Uh, decrease in pregnenolone, progesterone, pre those two hormones also have roles in men, although uh, we have very limited data on, on, on them. So decreasing them may also have other uh, implications. So LH is needed, as I said before, for activation of the stereogenic acute protein, STAR. We, uh, that's uh, the, the nomenclature here. Uh, also for uh, three beta hydroxysteroid dihydrogenase and for 1720 lyase to metabolize cholesterol into pregnenolone and progesterone. Uh, testosterone supplementation shuts down LH and may decrease pregnenolone and progesterone and HCG, which is an LH mimicker, may reactivate STAR and, um, and normalize the, this cascade. As I said, this is just a hypothesis that needs to be proven with further research. A study actually showed that HCG increases not only serone and intratesticular testosterone, which is responsible for sperm production, but also increases upstream hormones like 17-hydroxy progesterone androstenedione and DHEA. So there is some indication here from this study that they, what I just uh, mentioned in the previous slide may actually be happening. Uh, HCG decreases uh, sex hormone binding globulin, so it, it actually uh, it inc increases free testosterone because of that, like any androgen. And could, be, uh, could this be some reasons why libido may increase in men on testosterone replacement therapy plus HCG? We don't know. Is, is, is this libido enhancement due to uh, increases in free testosterone or increases in the upstream hormones? Or, um, or increases even on DHT and, and even estradiol that I'll be speaking about um, next. So testosterone therapy plus HCG, the effect on intratesticular testosterone, the testosterone inside the uh, testicle. And this, this testosterone is actually the most, one of the most important factors involved in sperm production. And interesting enough, when we provide testosterone supplementation into, you know, for a, for a man, either through injections, gels, pellets, etc., we actually decrease increase the serum or blood levels of testosterone, obviously. But due to the LH shutdown, intratesticular testosterone decreases, and that's a fact that um, I think most clinicians don't really know. 
In this study, uh, 24 men were uh, given 200 milligrams a week of testosterone enanthate, and also in combination with HCG, uh, placebo 125, 250, and 500, I use every other day for three weeks. Very interesting study that set the, basically set the field into what we're experiencing now uh, using the combination of testosterone and HCG. So these are graphs that come from that study. Um, sorry, there's a little busy here. The two left-hand side ones, um, top and bottom are LH and FSH. Um, uh, y-axis is days. So you see obviously that um, or uh, all doses of HCG um, decrease LH and FSH like I said before. The right hand side one on the top is serum testosterone. Obviously the higher the dose of HCG the higher the testosterone. Um, 500 I use and 250 actually went a little high, uh, higher than the normal range and this was uh, as I said injections um, um, provided well with, on men that were using 200 milligrams uh, a week of testosterone. And the bottom one, the most important graph, it shows uh, on one side the testosterone and the uh, y axis, um, x axis, I'm sorry, the doses of, of HCG up to 500 I use. And you see the bars, uh, the dark ones and the dashed one. Is, the dark one is baseline intratestricular testosterone and the dashed one is uh, intratestricular testosterone at day 21. The, dose, the only dose that was able to actually increase ITT over baseline was 500. 250 was very close. So really a dose between 250 and 500 are used in this uh, healthy male population was able to restore um, the testosterone inside the testicles to normal levels for production of uh, sperm. So that's uh, the, the dose of 500 I use is, is, is has been adopted by many clinics using combination of testosterone and HCG. After this study, uh, the Baylor uh, College of Medicine group led by Dr. Lipschultz um, decided to run um, a follow-up study, um, in this case a retrospective review of four years of um, men with low T presenting at the Baylor Andrology Clinic here in Houston. And uh, 26 men uh, who con were concerned about their fertility, um, who had been previously um, provided testosterone, creams, gels, and injections and were, were, um, were prescribed HCG at 500 IUs, as I said before, every other day with um, exogenous testosterone. Uh, 19 of them were on intramuscular testosterone at 200 milligrams per week and seven of them were on transdermal gels at five grams per day for an average of 6.2 months. Uh, this, this was actually the review time for the study. And despite a mean post-treatment level uh, of testosterone of uh, 1,055 uh, nanograms per deciliter. The seminal pa parameters of the semen count, motility, and morphology did not significantly change during the period of observation. What does that mean? The addition of HCG to testosterone replacement um, actually prevented the decrease of uh, sperm count, motility, and morphology of the sperm. So that, that was actually, a, even though it's a small study, it really set the uh, the pace for for um, what we are experiencing in the field right now. Not as I said before, not every physician agrees uh, to prescribe HCG with testosterone, mostly because of lack of education and lack of uh, knowledge of this data. So the Baylor study demonstrated the ability of low dose HCG to maintain uh, spermatogenesis despite the administration of exogenous testosterone. And this is just more data from that study that, uh, to show um, all the different variables they followed through, through the study itself. However, after further analysis, um, this was actually presented later on uh, by the same group uh, at Baylor. Uh, they found that um, HCG in combination of testosterone did not work um, as well for everybody. Older men with a lot more uh, longer exposure, pre-exposure of testosterone in the past had lower um, efficacy or response 
when it came to um, you know uh, total motile count of sperm. So um, you know this is something very important to to know that even though uh, we have promising data on the combination of HCG and testosterone to um, preserve fertility in men. Uh, this combination may not be effective for everybody and there are other ways to improve fertility in, in men with lower response um, like um, using uh, clomiphene and, and uh, combinations of HCG or even follicle stimulating hormone which is also sold by compounding pharmacies and combinations of, of all that. So this is just one approach and obviously it's not an approach that works for everybody but it's, it's definitely promising, especially for younger men, 20s and their 30s, um, that are starting testosterone replacement and want to preserve uh, tes uh, testicular function and uh, sperm count. And this is a very interesting algorithm used by Baylor. Uh, I, I, it is not a common algorithm used in the field, I have to say, because um, I was pretty surprised when I saw this data, which you know was presented um, in 2015 by the same group. Uh, Dr. Ramasamy is a uh, urologist that now works in Miami, but um, used to work with, uh, used to be a fellow for Dr. Lipschultz in Houston. But anyways, uh, the top uh, step here is uh, a man coming in desiring to maintain fertility while starting testosterone supplementation therapy, uh, TST. On the left hand side, excuse me, <coughs> you see uh, yes, they definitely want to keep um, keep their fertility. We'll go down that way now. Is uh, pregnancy desired uh, soon or mid-range or long-term? On the left-hand side, you can say less than six months. You can see that. And um, this group um, uh, recommends to stop testosterone supplementation and actually start uh, higher doses of HCG monotherapy every other day. Uh, with or without clomiphene, depending on the patient, until the third trimester um, with semen analysis done every two months to make sure that this protocol actually works. Is semen analysis remains um, suboptimal, uh, considering uh, adding uh, FSH to this protocol. Uh, for middle term, kind of six to twelve months, desired to for pregnancy, um, they continue to, uh, to testosterone, and they add 500 use of HCG every other day. In some men, they may actually even add clomiphene uh, for an extra um, boost there. And uh, long term, like over 12 months uh, of desire to 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 attempt that pregnancy. Um, this is the kind of the most interesting side that I haven't seen before. They cycle uh, off uh, testosterone on these men uh, every six months and they provide instead a four week cycle of 3000 units of HCG every other day. There is no, as I said, there's no data whatsoever on this approach. I even talked to them this week and um, they just say this is anecdotally something that is uh, working for their, their patients. So, but as I said, no, every clinic is using different protocols since um, there are really no guidelines when it comes to the combination of testosterone and HCG. On the right hand side, we, had, um, we have men that do not desire to maintain fertility in the setting of TST. Um, they desire to, there's a periodical cycle of, of testosterone um, approach that, as I said, Baylor uses sometimes. They, they uh, prescribe testosterone supplementation for six months, then they switch to a monotherapy of 3,000 IUs of HCG every other day and uh, for four weeks, and then they go back into testosterone supplementation again. The rationale is that, you know, basically this stimulates uh, uh, the Leydig cells for short periods of time. As I said, I have yet to see data the, that this is uh, more effective than just using testosterone supplementation plus, plus HCG uh, in a constant manner. All right, so let's move on. So as I said before, HCG plus testosterone may not be effective for all men uh, that want to uh, remain fertile or increase their fertility. 
so in, 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 this, in this population, the use of recombinant uh, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which is a very expensive pharmaceutical product, but that uh, can be obtained more cheaply through uh, very few, I think there's one or two compounding companies in the United States that are, 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 um, are making this product. So physicians uh, may actually prescribe HCG in combination with uh, FSH to improve uh, fertility in this man. And I'm not gonna go through this table so I'll give everybody a headache, but it's a review of different studies uh, published as uh, far as back as 1984. <clears throat> this is not, um, you know, the last study here is 2010. So there were, there have been some more studies since then, but the recovery of uh, spermatogenesis, uh, anywhere from 50% uh, to 100%, depending on the population. The dose of HCG, which as you can tell is variable here, the frequency of injections of HCG, FSH dose, and the frequency of injections of FSH. So um, this is, as I said, fertility is a fast moving field that um, which in which protocols really are dependent on the person, um, uh, the person's history more than um, the protocol itself. This is a very interesting case, uh, history uh, posted by Dr. Justin Saya from uh, Defy Medical in Tampa on my site excelmail.com. I have a few doctors that post uh, very interesting information and they also answer questions on my site. Uh, um, there are over 16,000 men uh, registered there, but uh, we have over 4 million page uh, views uh, a year. So it's becoming really popular. I'm very, very happy about that. But anyways, he gave um, somebody, um, and this is one single person, um, 150 IUs of HCG and also 500 IUs. And he measures the, they measure the beta uh, HCG blood levels. You know, this is a simple pregnancy test basically. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and obviously with a higher dose, um, there was a, a higher increase of beta HCG, but also a more sustained concentration of HCG. So um, this is relevant uh, to know for consideration in comparison of quantitative serum beta concentrations with uh, endogenous um, luteinizing hormone concentrations in a typical normal range for, uh, it's around 1.7 to 8.6. Uh, this is very important, especially, and I haven't mentioned this, um, some cancers like testicular cancer can actually produce HCG. <clears throat> And that complicates matters. Uh, let's say um, a man has uh, testicular cancer, is treated uh, for, for that cancer, the cancer goes on remission. And obviously, uh, usually men with testicular cancer uh, end up being uh, hypogonadal <clears throat> and they require a testosterone replacement and or HCG for the testicle that uh, remains healthy. And um, and so it's very, very difficult to know whether they, an increase in HCG blood levels is caused by the return of cancer or the dosing of HCG in that, in that man. So this, this was a very curious uh, case that uh, Dr. Saya was kind enough to share with us. <clears throat> And this is, this is definitely a topic that is discussed a lot on online uh, forums like mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, HCG, just like testosterone, uh, increases obviously uh, estradiol uh, blood levels and, and testosterone. The higher the dose, the higher their, their concentration, obviously. This is really a, a no-brainer. But another study um, actually um, gave me a very interesting view on, the, on this matter. The dose used here was 3,000 IUs of HCG daily for three days and uh, this, an estradiol was measured in, in this man and you could see an increase in estradiol and then uh, return, slow return to, um, I wouldn't say baseline, but lower levels um, even though we're injecting HCG uh, three times in this study. So uh, there may be a stabilization uh, after a while in men uh, using HCG, and in this case, that's obviously a higher dose, that 3,000 I use instead of a 500 I use. We, 
uh, we're using mostly with testosterone replacement therapy uh, currently. So um, I will, in another webinar, because this is getting a little long, I'll be uh, speaking about uh, harm reduction strategies for uh, uh, current or former uh, anabolic steroid users uh, that are requiring to uh, normalize their fertility and testosterone after they use these compounds. So potential studies that I see uh, needing in this field <clears throat> are uh, first the first one the effect of looking at the effect of testosterone supplementation hcg and their combination on upstream hormones like pregnenolone progesterone cortisol and dhea that's a very important we need that data <clears throat> so if anybody out there is listening or watching this uh, video and want to get in a hold of me you can you can find me through uh, clinicoptimizers.com or excelmail.com <clears throat> or discountedlabs.com and I'll be more than happy to give you some ideas on how to um, design this protocol. The second one is looking at the effect of addition of HCG to testosterone replacement or supplementation, I'm sorry, on self-reported libido, testicular size and mood in men. Even though we're using HCG for all these three uh, benefits, um, we have little data on the subject. So <clears throat> we need to formalize this benefit so that more physicians are, are more open to prescribing HCG to men that are currently extremely frustrated and venting on my <laughs> online forum and also on my uh, testosterone replacement discussion uh, Facebook group which also has over 13,000 men. <clears throat> the third one is uh, looking at the effect of the addition of HCG uh, to testosterone supplementation on sensitive uh, estradiol and DHT, DHT blood levels in the longer in the longer term. Uh, term, so I showed data that only really uh, looked at a few days of injecting daily at higher doses. We need definitely need long-term follow-up data on men on HCG monotherapy and also on the combination of HCG and testosterone to assess any potential uh, HCG desensitization, which uh, some men are worried about. I've used HCG for over four years, and I cannot say that it has uh, stopped uh, working when it comes to libido and testicular atrophy prevention in my case. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have absolutely no control data on optimum um, hypothalamic uh, pituitary uh, testicular access normalization uh, protocols in men, uh, former users or current users of uh, anabolic androgenic steroids. So as I said, I will be covering that topic in another uh, webinar uh, since I do not want to keep uh, you guys longer than I should when it comes to watching this webinar. So thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned because um, you can actually find more um, videos on the YouTube channel for Excel Mail. So uh, just Google that Excel Mail uh, YouTube for over 75 other videos that hopefully you guys will like. Thank you so much and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.